That's Wednesday, March 6th. Thursday, March 7th. If you're on the East Coast, across the pond, or down under. And this, my friends, is Spaced Out Radio. Hope you had a great day at night. I am your host, Dave Scott, broadcasting to you live from the Great White North on top of the mountains of central British Columbia, right here at SOR headquarters. We welcome you to tonight's show, including Deep Talk Radio and Revolution Radio. If you want to take a listen to our archives, they are free at youtube.com forward slash spaced out radio. Just do me the favor, hit that subscribe button. Our website is spacedoutradio.com, where we have a plethora of features for you. Rock out to Bumblefoot. While you're listening in, head to our Spaced Out Radio store and pick up some swag. It's a great way to support this show. And, of course, you can read up on Captain Shirk's SOR Newswire and much more. Tonight's show is brought to you by the YouTube channel in Suho. Sebastian Martin brings high-quality messages to the masses. Head to our website, click on the in Suho banner, and subscribe today. Tonight, we head into the basin of Utah, where for centuries, an eerie legend has passed from generation to generation in First Nations lands that could literally kill you. The skinwalker is said to be, in Navajo culture, a type of harmful witch doctor and or medicine man who has used his powers for evil, giving them the ability to turn into, possess, or disguise themselves as very creepy animals. And for those in Ballard, Utah, the word skinwalker is synonymous with the old Sherman Ranch. Tonight's guest, Ryan Burns, has investigated around the Skinwalker Ranch numerous times. The legends of Bigfoot, UFOs, paranormal, and other strange anomalies led him to write a book called Skinwalker and Beyond, which can be found on Amazon. So what is happening at this ranch? Does Robert Bigelow still play in the paranormal lands of Utah? So many questions, and we're going to get to them all. Then at the bottom of hour number three, I'm going to be bringing you the SOR Newswire, brought to you by Paranoia Magazine. Ryan Burns, welcome to Spaced Out Radio for the first time. Great to have you on. How are you? Great. I'm wonderful. Glad to have you here. Thanks. Appreciate it. Not a problem. Let's learn a little bit about you so our audience gets gets to know who you are a little bit. What was your first fascination with the Skinwalker Ranch? Had you heard of it before you started really digging in? Were you a fan of UFOs? Did you have your own experience? What led you to this point? You know, none of the above. It it was the situation where I was at the either the, the wrong place at the wrong time, depending on how you look at it, or the right place at the right time. And I basically picked up what uh, tribal police later described to me, it, what they thought was a skinwalker. And that was the first time I had heard the the term. So um, my first experience was kind of baptism by fire. I literally, back then there was no gate to the ranch there on the main ranch road. And you could literally drive through the whole property. And I, it was mid nineties and yeah, I just picked up the wrong hitchhiker. So that, that's how I got into it. Hold on. You got to go into detail about that. You picked up a hitchhiker that was a skinwalker. That was, um, it, it was an elderly, elderly native American, uh, looking individual. Um, it, they had a, Native American blanket on them. They were kind of hunched over. They were elderly. It was hard. Uh, I got a side profile look and I just stopped trying to be the good Samaritan and said, Hey, uh, can I give you a ride somewhere? And they crawled into my truck and just, you know, within what felt like seconds, it felt like I, you know, I was in tears and it felt like I was just being like a Rolodex just being ran through. Like they were just kind of reading my mind, I guess you would say. Oh, wow. How, how did that feel? What you, I want to know all these details now. Yeah, it was really, um, it was emotional. It, it, It was, uh, it was definitely concentrating on, um, parts of your life that are more, emotional than others so it the, the, the most emotional so it was arconic in nature it was kind of like thriving it seemed like in or at least 
now that I look back at it at the time, I didn't know, but it was definitely just kind of uh, reading me is what it felt like. So when you picked up this gentleman, was he talking to you? Was he, was he communicating or was he sitting there silent? Never said a word. Yep. Silent. And, uh, just got in the truck, um, never really said anything. And just within moments that took place and I never really, uh, got a full recognition of, uh, whether it was a him or a her either, uh, just that it was an elderly native American and just, you know, missing time after that. And, uh, fast forward to, and I was hanging out of, uh, very close to Skinwalker Ranch, this area that I won't name, but I was hanging out of it. And um, the Bureau of Indian Affairs pulled up, obviously thinking, oh, we've got somebody that's just drunk or passed out. Or, and um, they did their test. I was fine. And they said, what happened? And I told them to the best of my ability. And they said, oh, we got nabbed by a Skinwalker. And, you know, I've spoken with tribal police since. And this is an unfortunate part of the job is if, if, if you're on the patrol or the beat of certain areas in this basin, you're going to see things that, you know, whether you're law enforcement or not, you're going to have to kind of compartmentalize and not, you know, not deal with the, the way you deal with normal things. So Ryan, when you were going through this, and you got pulled over by tribal police. Did the this person oh, no, in your no, vehicle no. disappear? I, I, oh no, no, no! I was already I was passed out, kind of hanging out of my truck with the door open. Okay, uh, in an area known as Bottle Hollow, and that's where the old uh, the the Buffalo soldiers that would take precedence over Fort Duchesne when they would go to Roosevelt and get their bottles. For example, they would throw them in bottle hollow and this area has become very legendary in itself. And yeah, I was just kind of hanging out of my truck, just kind of out of it. Like, um, not really, I don't, I don't want to say passed out, but catatonic really just not, not even conscious, but when they woke me up, I was perfectly fine. And they were like, Hey, what, what's going on? And I just kind of told them and they said, Oh, it sounds like he got nabbed by the skinwalker. Do you even recall what happened? Like, um, was there a lot, was there almost like a loss of time, Ryan, when you were, having this experience talking to this guy and the next thing you know you're you're passed out and pulled over do you do you know what happened there there was definitely some missing time i think it was it was substantial so um and i mean what's interesting is this type of thing happens and uh, again you know speaking with tribal police since and you know that's the least of it. Like they, they see things that, that they can't really describe sometimes. And, uh, with, I mean, they literally get to see these things in action and, and as well as other locals, um, who, who've seen them on the roadways, um, very similar to the beast of Bray road. Uh, these dog man sightings, if, if people are familiar with that. Yes. And it's just, you know, it's just the area. It's so difficult to describe how remote the area is. Uh, for example, I was recently in the area filming with some people, and we were standing in the middle of this roadway, and and it's in an area where these things are sighted quite often. And as we stood in the roadway, like we, we, we started to realize like, gosh, we've been here quite a while and nobody's driven by. And yeah, it's just the desolation I think adds, adds to the experiences. 
So when you're sitting there kind of passed out and all of a sudden the tribal police pull up and they tell you that uh, it looks like you were in contact with a skinwalker, considering you were kind of drowsy and out of it, did you think, what the, what the heck are they talking about? What, what is this skinwalker thing? Right. I, I didn't really know. And I started looking into it after that. And that's what sort of fueled my fire is that um, as I looked into it and read other cases, it, it just, it, it was enough to fuel me to, you know, drop my job in corporate America rent my house, move up to the area, and just research full-time. And, you know, I did that for quite some time. And it, what, what you start to learn is the more you learn, you know, it just, that rabbit hole, the less, you, you realize the less you really know. So what is it that we that we don't know about this? What were you able to learn about what a skinwalker is? Well, it's, 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 it's very dynamic. So there's a, there's a multitude of things going on in this area. You have um, the cultural things uh, with, with tribal curses going back and forth from the Ute. Uh, Navajo towards the Ute, and that would be the curse of the skinwalker. Then you also have curses going from the Ute to the... Buffalo soldiers back when they were in charge of Fort Duchesne and uh, vice versa. And then you have later on with the Utah Conservancy Project, with the Water Project, you have a massive power line that's just thrown along this already magical like ridge line that has been charged already and and um when uh the spanish priests dominguez and escalante came through in 1776 they were already reporting seeing ufos in this area so this was already kind of like happening and you throw in these massive power lines that over the years have started to just kind of degrade and they're starting to seep energy and their casings on the wires are cracking and it's magical. Like what's really taking place here is just phenomenal in my opinion. So for people who have never been in that area, and I would say the majority of our listeners are probably like that. What's it like? Describe the area for us in detail. Extremely desolate. Um, a lot of uh, desolation. You'll see properties that uh, properties that are like poverty stricken and just abandoned. And then you'll also see uh, dynamic, massive, you know, fields and and um, waterways. But kind of like all the while, you have this high desert, red rock, canyony feel. And um, something that's just not quite right is the best way to to explain it. And the more you're there, the more you kind of miss it when you're not there. But there's something that's just not quite right. Is it just a feeling you get inside yourself, or is it more so a feeling of just being in an area that you shouldn't be? What's that like? I think it's kind of compounding. It's it's it's, it's being in an area that, uh, if you've already seen things, for example, a lot of these hot spots I've into probably thousands of times and and the problem with that is you kind of get desensitized and start to expect it but but you never really know what it is you know you're going to encounter and it's it's effect can 
can range from elevating spiritual experience to just a complete like psychic attack. Is it an element of fear? There's, there's always, uh, uh, I'd say a healthy fear is probably a good thing to just have a healthy fear and, um, just be aware, but a healthy fear is probably a good thing. Now, what brings on that fear? Um, you know, what, what comes to mind is that acronym, what is it? The false evidence appearing real, you know, when you hear fear, but when that evidence, that false evidence becomes actual evidence before your very eyes, you know, usually the, the skeptic usually is the one that, you know, their, their beats per minute, their heart will like beat a lot faster. They'll almost kind of go into anxiety and it's like, it's okay. It's okay. And you know, the, the trickster mentality of whatever it is that roams these bad lands, it loves that, that, that skeptic interaction. Um, it kind of craves that, emotional discharge or um, that raw fear. If it, if it can create that fear and then just kind of like rush in and take it, it seems like that is some, that's a good way that it likes to interact. And whether it knows that that's, you know, not very socially acceptable or not and, and what exactly this, this entity is, but, but that that's debatable. But one thing's for sure is it likes raw emotion, whether it's fear, happiness, joy. Um, it just likes the the highlights. It likes it likes it likes the peaks and valleys. Right. We are talking with author Ryan Burns tonight on Spaced Out Radio. We're talking Skinwalker Ranch tonight, Ryan. In regards to your experiences, let's go back to where the tribal police found you, and you were kind of dazed and confused. They thought you may have been drinking or on something, but you clearly passed the test in regards to that. Did they stand there and and, and explain what kind of happened to you or the possibilities of what happened? Because when I hear of people talk about skinwalkers on this show there's always an element of evil that that skinwalker is trying to kill that person. Did you feel threatened in any way? And did the police kind of go over what potentially happened or could have happened to you? You know, I do remember them saying amongst themselves um, certain things, but, but to me directly, they, they, when I asked, they said, oh, it's just like witchcraft stuff. And I was like, witchcraft stuff? And, you know, and in my mind, I'm thinking, okay, that kind of makes sense. I'm, I'm here later in the day. I've lost some time. Seems like kind of witchy. Um, and uh, the things I remember them saying is uh, things like, oh, it's, it's, it's hunting outside the tribe now and things like that. But, but, you know, I, I think that this phenomenon, I mean, since then I've spoken with a multitude of individuals that have seen it from every, everything from tourists driving through to you know, farmers and ranch hands and oil workers and property owners, and successful business owners in the community. And, you know, they all kind of, it, there's no kind of rhyme or reason. We all feel targeted for whatever reason, but it, it, this, these things or this thing just exists. And for whatever reason, when you interact with it, there's that kind of like, at first you try to get, away from it as much as possible. I just try to delve in, I delved into work and I tried to pay no attention to it. And then later it kind of like is haunting. And I just kind of said, no, I want to figure out what this is all about. And, um, I find that with a lot of other individuals as well. So there's, there's something, something to it. You know, you feel targeted. So then you feel 
as if you have to kind of answer some of those questions. What kind of questions were you having as you started thinking about this? Because this pretty much became a an obsession for you to learn, if we could say that. Um, the lack of boundaries that that these entities have is just, you know, phenomenal. I mean, like just being, you know, climbing into your truck and just basically mind wiping you, just like reading everything about you. And also the lack of boundaries in the sightings, you know, like you said, everything from Bigfoot to UFOs to like dog men, werewolf creatures and cryptozoological creatures that you can't even describe scientists seeing raptors and, you know, things that just don't make sense. And, um, <clears throat> the large dog, like dog like creatures are by far the most prominent, you know, six, seven foot dogs, you know, just roaming roadways. And that's the part that is probably the most frequent but, you know, again, you know, when, when you have like the, some of the top minds in the world trying to figure out what this stuff is, they come back to like the same issue, which is it is the same thing, whether it is a UFO you're looking at or this particular, you know, other creature that seemed to be formed of mist. Um, and, 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 you know, being human beings, we try to like put it in a box, name it something, whether that's alien artificial intelligence or uh, this is just, you know, strictly right. black magic or po possibly a djinn, you know, like in the Middle East. You know, these are the for and the forefront of, you know, the top minds. Absolutely. I'm going to get you to hold on right there, Ryan. We're going to hop out for a break at the bottom of the hour here. Ryan Burns is our guest tonight on Spaced Out Radio. If you want to check out his website, pick up his books, you can go to ryanpatrickburns.com. More Skinwalker Ranch, more Skinwalkers, and the strange sightings around Utah. Ute Basin, coming on up on Spaced Out Radio. You're listening to Spaced Out Radio Live with Dave Scott on the Deep Talk Radio Network. Are you intrigued by Paranormal Talk Radio? you love the new Paranormal Radio app from Talk Stream Live. You'll find a great selection of talk shows covering UFOs, ghosts, strange phenomena, and much more. Download the Paranormal Radio app now and start listening to the very best in paranormal talk entertainment, including the network you're listening to right now, the Paranormal Radio app, free in Google Play and the iOS App Store. Looking for a place to advertise at a very reasonable cost? Look no further than Spaced Out Radio. SpacedOutRadio.com has an advertising tab that you can click to check out our daily weekly and monthly packages to play on the radio or our website including social media from commercial spots to banners we have it all check out our competitive pricing today hi there this is geraldina roscoe from san francisco's bay area meditation i invite you to join me the first tuesday of every month with dave scott for spaced out radios the spiritual you in this fast-paced world we live in it's time for you to take some time for you we'll cover every possible subject from powerful meditation to healing techniques to your own intuition and spirituality so come join us for the spiritual you Hi, George Nori here. Are you ready for UFO Megacon, the immersion event? Seven days, eight nights, 50 new speakers, UFO military witnesses, experiencer groups, sky watches, and so much more. Join me at UFO Megacon, March 24th through the 30th in Laughlin, Nevada. Truly the one and only new information conference of the year. Now check it out at ufomegacon.com. 
That's UFOmegacon.com. Heading to Vancouver and looking for a night on the town? The Moose Vancouver is the bar that never stops rocking until 2 a.m. every night. The Moose has great food with everything on the menu from $6.95 to $8.95. Fantastic, vibrant staff and rock and roll that will bring you back to when the music was real, the hair was long, and the guitars were rocking. Get your party on at the Moose Vancouver, the official party bar of Spaced Out Radio. Visit purpleplates.com today. For over 40 years, the Purple Energy Plates have been delivering amazing results for their many customers. Inspired by the great genius Nikola Tesla, the harmony, healing, and energetic effects of the plates have proven over and over to be beneficial and often miraculous to thousands of customers. Check their site for daily specials and choose from their many energy products. You won't be sorry. Visit them today at purpleplates.com. A timepiece is a reflection of who you are. And what better way to show off the real you than with an Escape watch? Escape is a lifestyle brand accessorizing your days and nights. Choose to escape and create the life of discovery that you deserve. Dream, play, unite with your own personalized Escape watch. Head to escapewatches.com. There is no time like the present to enjoy your escape. Use promo code SMF2017 for your 20% discount today. Coming soon to our website, spacedoutradio.com, is the SOR Space Travelers Club. For just five bucks a month, you can get into a private area on our site where you can hang with other listeners in our chat room, post in our forum, and check out a bunch of exclusive content and store that won't be found anywhere else, including a nightly after show party with Dave. It's going to be the best five dollars a month you're going to spend. The SOR Space Travelers, only at spacedoutradio.com. Did you know Spaced Out Radio runs seven days a week? Hi there, this is Tessa Nicole Thomas, and I'm here to take you on a paranormal journey each Saturday and Sunday night. Why change the station when you have it all right here? Together, we'll hang out and share some strange and scary stories. And don't forget, we have Psychic Sundays as well, so come tune in Spaced Out Weekend. We get going at 9 p.m. Pacific, midnight Eastern, only at spacedoutradio.com, where we own the night. Hello, this is your guitar man, Ron Bumblefoot Thaw, and I have to tell you, I love the response I get for Little Brother is Watching from Spaced Out Radio fans. It's amazing how music can inspire and make people think deeper about what's going on in the supernatural world. You can head over to my website, bumblefoot.com, to check out my music, my guitar workshops, my touring, even check out some of the hot sauces that I'm working on. And make sure you keep on listening, because with Spaced Out Radio, you know Little Brother is Watching. We're bringing scientific thought to the paranormal. Hi there, this is Spaced Out Radio scientist Chris Cogswell. Join me, Chris Zuger, and Dave Scott the second Wednesday of every month where we break down the who from the woo when it comes to everything paranormal. We'll investigate and try to bring sensible answers to those straight and sometimes outlandish questions people have. Hey, not everything is an answer, but we'll do our best. Listen in to Reality Paranormal only on Spaced Out Radio. Are you tired of being blocked, shadow banned, or placed in jail for simply posting your thoughts on social media? Social Media Freedom can take care of that for you. Social Media Freedom is the newest and one of the best free new apps that allows you the freedom to post what you want, when you want. It takes seconds to download from your app store. Come join the tribe at Social Media Freedom. It's time to set yourself free. You hear footsteps in the empty room above you. A rocking chair begins rocking by itself. Don't be afraid of the things that go bump in the night. Reach for Spirit Story Box. The iPhone app the Huffington Post UK called the only ghost hunting app you will ever need. Spirit Story Box. The spirits are telling their stories. Are you listening? 
So, you love talk radio, then you'll love TalkStreamLive.com. TalkStream Live is always on, 24-7, with the best streaming talk shows. Find your favorite talkers and discover some new ones. It's free, readily available online, or on mobile with any smartphone or tablet. Finding your favorite talk shows all in one place has gotten a whole lot easier. Just go to TalkStreamLive.com. Be sure to download the free apps from Google Play or the iTunes App Store. Welcome back to the second half hour of Spaced Out Radio. Tonight, I am your host, Dave Scott, sitting in the captain's chair of SOR headquarters tonight. Glad to be broadcasting live to you, wherever you may be. Don't forget, during the break or while you're listening in, a good time to head to our Spaced Out Radio website. Just throw a .com on the back of that. And, of course, you could go shopping. We've got T-shirts, hats, coffee mugs, socks, you name it, we got it. It's a great way to support this show, so make sure you head to the SOR store today. We are talking Skinwalker Ranch tonight and what skinwalkers are. Joining us is author Ryan Burns. Now, he has written a couple of books about what is going on in Utah. There's a lot of strange happenings out there. His two books are Skinwalker and Beyond and the Utah UFO Ranch. Ryan, right before the break, we were talking about your experience because you kind of got thrown into this. You believe you had a skinwalker in your truck while you were driving through the area, and all you were wanting to do is give a helping hand to somebody who needed a ride in the middle of the night. Right. Yep. So it's... um... Yeah, go ahead. So when you finally collected your thoughts about what happened and and you're back on the road here, was there a different sense in your vehicle? What was going through your brain at that time? Was there any odorous smells going on? Fill us in. Just how is any of this possible? You know, um, I, I was working as a fly fishing guide nearby at the time and just, just how is any of this possible? I mean, it's like you have these dimensional saboteurs that, you know, are they there? Like that, that was the first thing I was like, was this something I really saw? But, you know, then again, the, the guys were talking about it. So it exists. Um, but yeah, definitely that, uh, sort of that tap on the shoulder that, Hey, we are not alone. There's, there's other entities in this time and space or, you know, that share this, this dimension when they want to. Well, that, that's an important question because, you know, it obviously puts a lot of pressure on absolutely everything that is going on. It really does, right? Because it, when you have something like this happen that you cannot explain, I'm going to assume that, that you really question your own sanity, you question your own faith and everything about yourself up until that point. Exactly. And... You know, I think that's that's some of the the most fascinating territory with this research is that you find that a lot of other professionals that are deeply uh, invested in this, whether they're you know paid by research organizations or owners of particular properties or uh, science groups or you know shadow government black budget groups, you name it, you know, some of the sources and contacts I've, I've learned, you begin to get this sort of um, spiritual awakening in a sense of, you know, assessing your reality in a different way than you did before, where it's, it's definitely a more spiritual journey when you realize that these other entities can, and, you know, be, involved in the same space that we are. Now, did you believe in any of this before this happened? Did you have an intrigue about any of these topics? Like, we know you were thrust into it, but there's always some sort of belief, or somebody will say they don't believe. What was your 
scenario before this happened comparatively to afterwards? How have you changed? You know, I think um, the way I've changed is I, I just, I view, I view everything through that prism of, you know, is this reality or is this just, you know, you know, whatever it is, you know, whether it's, and, and, and I guess it's through a more, a more spiritual, I guess, spiritual lens. Um, I, you start to consider yourself blessed when, when you keep going out to these areas where you know you can be harmed or damaged by these arconic forces, but you know, what you're seeing is just so cool that it's, it's, it's really hard to stay away. And, you know, I, I, I just, like I said, in a lot of these areas I've been to thousands of times. And when, when you look at it or sometimes you like speak to somebody that went and something tragic will happen and, and you realize like, wow, these are like actual hot spots in our reality. For some reason, they're geographically set in certain areas. And it's almost like the veil is just a little bit thinner and, and, and these entities are able to kind of dash in and out. And, um, you know, you start to see things like portals similar to the San Luis Valley in Colorado, uh, which also has kind of a youth connection with the tribe and um, a lot of the same stuff, these trickster entities or elements. They're almost like elemental entities really. And that trickster mentality is kind of what keeps them going. And, you know, in, in the research of a lot of these, I can't name names, unfortunately, because of, I just can't, but of some of these scientists. But these entities are just trying to interact, you know, because, I mean, we're talking about, like, non-corporeal. They're kind of precognitive, so they know what you're thinking before you think it. Or at least that's our theory. My theory is a little different. I think they can time travel, so I think they just keep replaying the instant again and again. But they, they're just trying to interact on any level. And what they tend to do is mimic. So if somebody's feeling fear, they will do the opposite and try to scare them. Or, or other, they'll be fearful themselves. Or they will, they will basically manifest in whatever it is you're thinking about. And... Um, the higher emotional volume, the better. So if you're thinking of the state puff marshmallow man, that's what will come out. And I don't know where Ghostbusters, the movie came up with that, but they were dead on. That's what these entities are looking for. Oh, you're opening up so many questions. You're opening up so many questions with comments like that. That's bringing the woo very, very heavy here. And I'm I'm pretty happy about that. But in regards, Ryan, to to your own experience with this, what what year did this happen to you? This would have been oh, I would say about ninety mid nineties, ninety three, ninety four. Okay, so relatively, I believe Robert Bigelow bought the Skinwalker Ranch in two thousand and six. So there was no fences up or anything along those lines. There was there was nothing there. No. So when you're when you're driving through that area, Ryan, and you're going through all of this, were, did you know you were on the private property of the ranch, or were you just near the uh, the vicinity of it? You know, I never even realized any of that boundary stuff or um, the name skin or any of that until until about 2005 when uh, its name became more well-known. But, you know, it, but to be honest, like even in the late 90s and early 2000s, um, people were still calling it the Utah UFO Ranch or 
the Sherman, the old Sherman place, you know, after they sold it to, to, to Bigelow. And if somebody called it the old Sherman place, that means they like knew somebody that knew somebody that, you know, they knew. And, um, yeah, it, it just, you know, it's, and it's by no means just that ranch. It's the whole area. It's really, uh, it's really just that they, unfortunately, that, that particular ranch was thrown in the limelight, you know, due to unfortunate circumstances. And, and, um, although it is right there, you know, in the basin, the epicenter of where it's all going on, it's this, there's a lot of these back roads lead, lead to hot spots that can only be described as areas of portal activity where if you go at night, you can actually, you can actually see these amber lights kind of open up and they're, you can tell they're off the ground, usually on ridge lines, um, usually close to power lines and they'll just kind of pop up, open up. And sometimes you'll see stuff go in and out of them and they'll close up again. And it's like, what is this? Like, what are we looking at? They, you know, the UFO sightings are really frequent. Um, it's, I, I, you'd be hard pressed to spend any given amount of time and not see one. And, you know, I've said that to people before and they're like, come on, are you guaranteeing? And I'm like, no, I won't guarantee it, but I'm just saying you'll be hard pressed. And I, I have yet to, you know, not, not at least have something that makes the person say, wow, you know, what was that? So it's, it's, it, and I think it's not so much the people or the play. It, it's more the place or the people. It's more the, the entity that wants to interact with, you know, newcomers really, you know, it's almost like, right. yeah. And it, I feel bad sometimes because I'm like, gosh, am I, am I just bringing bait? you know, to something that wants to interact, but, but it definitely has a display, you know, a, you know, a light display about it. Um, you can see a lot of different, a lot of different things. We are talking with author Ryan Burns tonight on Spaced Out Radio. We're talking about the Skinwalker Ranch. So after this incident that you took part in, all right, did you immediately start studying about this area in the basin in that area to start gathering your own images of what it was that you saw? How did, is that what led to eventually you coming out in 2011 with the book Skinwalker and beyond? Well, it, it happened a little bit later. Um, my, my initial reaction was that of most people. I just ignored it and just worked and just, you know, paid no attention to it. And, um, it just crept back into my psyche and I eventually ended up saying, you know what, Rick, forget this, forget the, the other, I just need to, you know, go up there and figure this out. And I, I literally just, you know, quit my job, ran my house, moved up to the area and I was researching every night for, you know, a very long time. So it, it, it was, um, opening, but at the same time, it's, I mean, it's really a, a jewel of an area from, a that perspective of like portals. And I mean, similar, very akin to like Sedona or, um, things of that nature. When did it really peak for you, Ryan? When did you start really taking notice? Was it after it started with with Bigelow buying in and them closing the fences to the area? Was it learning about what happened to the previous family on the farm? Was it the George Knapp reports? What led you down this path? You know, for me, what the peak for me and I, I've seen a lot of weird things. Um, but I would say the peak for me was one evening 
Oh, it, it's it's tough. It was actually the, the closest I could des- describe it is about 140, 150 pounds, close to seven feet tall, super thin, wearing what was somewhat similar to a baseball cap, and it had a um, a black and red flannel shirt and a walkie-talkie and pants and but it didn't look human. And I remember I was with another researcher at the time and we were like, what is this? And unfortunately the other researcher and I don't blame him at all took off. And I just kept looking at this thing, like, and it kept looking at me and I, I started to wonder, you know, um, is it just trying to appear in a way that is, acceptable by me and how close will it allow me to get and you know I didn't I didn't push my boundaries I eventually went the way of this other researcher and took off after him but um yeah it really it's it it pushes the boundaries of like what are we dealing with here you know people Mm -hmm. some people claim some some claim it's the Elohim you know actual like biblical small like well, entities that like built, you know, the planet we live in. Others claim it's, you know, this artificial alien intelligence that has been here for thousands of years in a nanoscopic level and they can manifest into different things and, and adjust our psyche. And and then there's those who believe it's more along the lines of like the djinn or the trickster or the, the skinwalker of Native American tribal beliefs. It's 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 a mixed bag, but there's something to it. We only got about four minutes here before we got to go to break at the top of the hour here. here excuse me. <clears throat> and in regards to the First Nations aspect, the Navajo aspect of the Skinwalker, what did you learn from going back and, and looking inside their heritage, their traditions, their legends and lore about what the Skinwalker was? Well, the best way I've um, been able to get perspective on that is to, just to be friends, you know, full blood um, you and Navajo and, and uh, gather, you know, what, what it is their views are. And I'm talking, you know, everything from people in Shiprock to, you know, in the basin and the actual, you, you went to basin people who claim to be skinwalkers, you know, that invite me over to their house. And it's, um, yeah, it's intense. It's really interesting stuff. I mean, I would say that the closest thing I would liken it to, like at least the intensity of like when I was with somebody who claimed self-proclaimed skinwalker is, you know, they described the actual change being more of, you know, them meditating in their house instead of like that Hollywood, you know, like the teeth and the crunching bones and the hair and, you know, the meditating in their house or in a special designated spiritual spot outside. And um, basically sort of, projecting like astrally projecting while they're wearing this animal skin and have they have this tunnel vision that eventually becomes them being the animal way where they are projecting it. And it's, it's pretty intense stuff. It's, it's very new agey kind of, but even though it's not, but um, yeah, very interesting. So with what you learned from the Navajo and Ute, did you believe then that you were dealing with something extremely dangerous? Yeah, um, I think, you know, whether they are actual portals being, you know, biodimensional portals that people are opening with their mind and believe that they're kind of like lycanthropically being um, led down a particular path, that I think that there's a reality to the Native American belief system. And I, I also think there's a reality to the belief that, you know, there is a dimensionality that these are, you know, saboteurs of our dimension. 
that may have been coming in and out for thousands of years, really. Um, people have been seeing stuff in this particular geographical area for quite some time, and and there's anomalies that you just don't find other places. So there's there's a variety of explanations, and um, I think a lot of it's semantics. In what regard? Um, depending on how you're raised in your belief system, what you experience could be very different. So, um, one person could experience something fearful. Somebody else could experience something more joyful. Someone else, um, a light or a metallic orb and somebody else could have, well, for example, um, one of the most intriguing things that I've had happen is I remember witnessing with another researcher, a, 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 I'll just say it, it was a security guard, and there was this device or orb or spherical metallic thing above it above the, the guy, the, the security guard. And it looked like it was just kind of tracking him or pacing him or, um, right. Right. And, and I, I didn't know if they were working in unison or if this was, it was unbeknownst to the security guard. So stuff like that. It's, it's interesting. Ryan, I'm going to get you to hold on right there because we are going to take our break at the top of the hour. One hour down, two hours to go on the mighty SOR. I am your host, Dave Scott, talking Skinwalker Ranch with author Ryan Burns tonight. We got more coming up on this fabulous topic. We'll be back with more Spaced Out Radio right after this. Every night on Space Out Radio, we have places for you to hang out. Hi, this is Carl. Join our SOR Space Travelers group on Facebook for live chat. On Twitter, using hashtag Spaced Out Radio, you can also join us in our Spreaker chat room. Check us out on Instagram at Dave Scott SOR. All of our archives are free on YouTube at Spaced Out Radio. By the way, I'll be watching you at your window until you do. Bye! Looking for the stories of the strange and weird that you will find hard to find anywhere else? Check out the SOR Newswire on our website. Our writers, led by Captain Shirk, are scouring the world for the oddest and most bizarre stories we can find. Everything from weird crime to suspenseful and paranormal. We're working hard for you to bring you the most intriguing news of your day. Check out the SOR Newswire at spacedoutradio.com today. You're listening to Spaced Out Radio Live with Dave Scott on the Deep Talk Radio Network. The freedom to post what you want, when you want. That's the social media freedom you need. Social Media Freedom is the free app in your app store. No need to worry about going to jail or being shadow banned any longer. It's the freedom to say what you feel. The freedom to know Big Brother isn't watching. It's the way social media is supposed to be. Social Media Freedom. It's time to set yourself free. Download from your app store today. Visit purpleplates.com today. For over 40 years, the Purple Energy Plates have been delivering amazing results for their many customers. Inspired by the great genius Nikola Tesla, the harmony, healing, and energetic effects of the plates have proven over and over to be beneficial and often miraculous to thousands of customers. Check their site for daily specials and choose from their many energy products. You won't be sorry. Visit them today at purpleplates.com. Hi, George Nori here. Are you ready for UFO Megacon, the immersion event? Seven days, eight nights, 50 new speakers, UFO military witnesses, experiencer groups, sky watches, and so much more. Join me at UFO Megacon, March 24th through the 30th in Laughlin, Nevada. Truly the one and only new information conference of the year. Now check it out at ufomegacon.com. That's ufomegacon.com.
You hear footsteps in the empty room above you. A rocking chair begins rocking by itself. Don't be afraid of the things that go bump in the night. Reach for Spirit Story Box. The iPhone app the Huffington Post UK called the only ghost hunting app you will ever need. Spirit Story Box. The spirits are telling their stories. Are you listening? So, you love talk radio, then you'll love TalkStreamLive.com. TalkStream Live is always on, 24-7, with the best streaming talk shows. Find your favorite talkers and discover some new ones. It's free, readily available online, or on mobile with any smartphone or tablet. Finding your favorite talk shows all in one place has gotten a whole lot easier. Just go to TalkStreamLive.com. Be sure to download the free apps from Google Play or the iTunes App Store. Get your horns up with me on Spaced Out Radio. This is Ron Bumblefoot Thaw. Come tune in to SOR where you can hear me rock out with Little Brother is Watching, the official theme song of Spaced Out Radio. And then come on over to Bumblefoot.com where you can find out about my tour schedule, my music, and everything else. Bumblefoot.com keeps you up to date on what I'm doing and the best way to stay in touch with my music and music camps. Sign up for my newsletter at Bumblefoot.com and remember, Little Brother is Watching. You know, it's hard being the bad man of ufology, but that's just the way that I like it. This is Chris George Zuger, and I'll be hanging out with Dave Scott and SOR scientist Chris Cogswell for Reality Paranormal, the second Wednesday of every month. And our job is to break it down and come to conclusions as to what is really going on in the supernatural world. I'd love for you to join us right here on Spaced Out Radio. On the first Tuesday of every month, I encourage you to come along for a journey with me, Geraldine Orozco, on The Spiritual You. Together, we will take a look at how to access the highest expression of yourself and change your life, consciousness, ET contact, health, and wellness. We can talk about it all. So come along for a spiritual ride with me, Geraldine Orozco, on The Spiritual You, only on Spaced Out Radio. Hey, this is Canadian Paranormal Investigator Mike Moore. The third Wednesday of every month, I'll be teaming up with Dave Scott to bring you Ghosts of the Great White North. Each month, we will bring on guests from across Canada to discuss their ghostly encounters. Canada is a paranormal hotbed with stories you've never heard, so we're going to bring them to you. So get comfy in your Chesterfield, grab a donut, and join us, eh? We are getting ready to relaunch the SOR Space Travelers Club at spacedoutradio.com. For $5 a month, you can join us for a plethora of features found nowhere else. Hang out in a private chat room during the show and after party. You can check out some exclusive content and a store specifically for you, as well as a private listener forum where you can post your thoughts, stories, and pictures. The SOR Space Travelers Club, coming soon to spacedoutradio.com. Find your escape where time has no limits. It's about living today and cherishing the heritage of yesterday. A spirit of adventure for what is new with the nostalgia of the past. Your timepiece is a reflection of who you are. Life surrounded by beauty from the world around us to the soul within. Escapewatches.com There is no time like the present to enjoy your escape. Use promo code SMF2017 for your 20% discount today. Looking for a place to advertise at a very reasonable cost? Look no further than Spaced Out Radio. SpacedOutRadio.com has an advertising tab that you can click to check out our daily, weekly, and monthly packages to play on the radio or our website, including social media. From commercial spots to banners, we have it all. Check out our competitive pricing today. Call of the Wild is in Vancouver. The Moose Vancouver is one of the hottest bars and restaurants in the city. Open until 2 a.m. nightly, the Moose will rock you like a hurricane all night long. Great food with everything on the menu at $6.95. Near the corner of Nelson and Granville, get your horns up and come rock with us. The Moose Vancouver, the official rocking bar of Spaced Out Radio.
You're listening to Spaced Out Radio with Dave Scott. Follow Dave on Twitter at Spaced Out Radio and on Facebook Spaced Out Radio Show. Welcome back to hour number two of Spaced Out Radio tonight. I am your host, Dave Scott. Always a pleasure to be broadcasting to you. Tomorrow night on the show, Michael Thompson joins us to talk Bigfoot and the monsters of Alaska. We get going at 9.06 Pacific, 12.06 a.m. Eastern at spacedoutradio.com. Hi to everyone listening in on our terrestrial affiliates, KDUN AM 1030 in Reedsport, Oregon, WQEE 99.1 FM in Noonan, Georgia, KZFX 93. 3.7 3.7 FM in Ridgecrest, California, and UPRN 107.7 FM in New Orleans. On the digital side, hi to everyone listening in on Revolution Radio and Deep Talk Radio. Good to have you with us. Don't forget, you can check out all of our archives for free by going to youtube.com forward slash spaced out radio. Just do old Davey the favor, hit that subscribe button. The Desert Clam has set the password for tonight in the SOR Space Travelers Club. Hmm. Obnubilate. Obnubilate is your password. Probably obnubilate. It's probably what it is. But the clam sets the password each and every night right here on the mighty SOR. Our website is spacedoutradio.com where we have a plethora of features for you. Go rocking out to Bumblefoot. While you're listening to the show, do a little shopping at our Spaced Out Radio store. It's a great way to support what we do around here. And of course, read up on Captain Shirk's SOR Newswire and so much more. Ryan Burns is our guest tonight on Spaced Out Radio. His website, ryanpatrickburns.com. He has written a couple of books about the skinwalkers of Utah. They are Skinwalker and Beyond and the Utah UFO Ranch. Very interesting indeed. And this all happened after he had his own encounter with what he believes was a skinwalker back in the 90s. Ryan, welcome back to the show. You bet. Ryan. Yeah. Uh-huh. Go ahead. You, I was going to explain that you were right before the break, you were telling this story about, about just the feelings and everything you were going through and what you were learning in regards to this. So if you want to continue on from that, I would appreciate it. Absolutely. Um, you know, it, it, it just ties right into, you know, the um, possible other theories you know, that it is alien in nature, possibly uh, has a uh, extraterrestrial capability because, you know, just the way I, it felt to me that I was having access, you know, my files accessed in some way. Um, I, I think that this phenomenon like falls into all of these categories that people believe in, whether they're culturally or theologically or scientifically correct. It's, it's, it's basically, we're dealing with these saboteurs, these dimensional saboteurs that can cruise in and out. I mean, they don't have bodies, but they can cruise in and out of our dimension. Um, probably the most common among researchers that, uh, go on the ridge lines late at night is what is called disembodied voice phenomenon. So, Above your head, usually, you'll have, like, what ha- is, is similar to, like, a conversation going on. And, you know, there can be two or three of you, and you're all quiet, and you're listening above you, and you can, like, hear these two chattering voices. And um, you can't usually make out what they're saying. They're kind of, I don't know. Uh, anyway, the, the, the list of phenomena goes on and on, and... To, to answer your question, there is no answer. It's whatever the entity or entities are, they have found a spot which is similar. I would liken it to an animal preserve. You know, they found a spot that is unique and it just works. And, and they're able to easily bounce from their dimension to ours and back with ease. Um, I, a theory that I absolutely love was that it is similar to an aircraft carrier. And when, when, when the fighter jets come down, they need that elastic band to kind of, you know, ease their landing. And um, a lot of the UFOs that are seen in the area 
are seen going right into a lot of the ridge lines. You know, when people described, well, where did it go? It just went right into the mountain or right into the ridge line. And, you know, there's maybe that dimensional fluidity or, you know, like as we spoke of earlier, the veil's a little thinner there. You can get away with a little more than other areas, but these entities definitely take advantage of that. When did you start learning about the fact that Robert Bigelow was getting involved with this to investigate all of these strange paranormal phenomena that were going on at this farm? And did that change the direction of the seriousness of the way you were thinking of this entire area? Absolutely. Um, When it hit me was when a close friend of mine told me that I was on the FBI blacklist and this was a ex FBI agent. And I was like, why, why would I? And he's like, come on, you know why? And he wasn't joking. And, um, it's, it's pretty intense when you follow the money, so to speak. Um, you know, with the recent 22 million that was reported in the New York times, Washington post, you know, to basically research Skinwalker Ranch and the what the uh, government saw as a threat through their advanced aerial threat identification program. So, I mean, when the government sees these things coming through as a possible threat, it's it's a little bit validating, um, and it it just you know when it really really hit me was. I started hearing about MIB activity and, you know, men in black type, but in nicer cars, newer cars. And um, I wasn't buying it. I really wasn't buying it. And then it happened to me. And, (laughs) you know, when it happened to me, I kind of realized like, wow, I get it. Like I, I get where the whole thing comes from, the whole men in black. But yeah, there's a very real men in black surrounding this phenomena. And there's a whole other group that even some of the most elite don't even know who they are. And um, there, there's, yeah, there's situations going on where the new management of the ranch, who's very highly connected, has this rogue arm of the government or government intelligence that is kind of doing whatever they want around them. And even their contacts don't know who they are. They just know that they exist. They're well-funded and they've been aware of them for quite a long time. So it's it's really interesting. Do you think Robert Bigelow is still involved there? You know, even though I have not signed any kind of non-disclosure agreement, I know enough not to say anything. And, um, the only thing I would say is it's a very complicated agreement. What do you mean by that? Why are you uncomfortable to go into those details? Well, it's it's not so much that it matters because it really doesn't matter. It's you know all of this is tied up in. LLCs and shell corporations incorporated another. And it's basically, you know, it's just research that these, so, I mean, who and why and what they're doing, that's really not the important thing, but the important thing is that a lot of money is being spent researching something that in the way it's been described 
by some is literally like the keys to the universe type of a description. And by that, it's, it's, you know, that, that can mean anything. We have had a number of people come on this show to talk about Skinwalker Ranch and, and including John Alexander, who is one of Big Lowe's right hand men back at the time and could still very Great well guy. be. Many believe he's also a part of the infamous aviary as well. Now, although he did not see anything that happened at Skinwalker, he said that everything the public has heard about this is true. And he was very adamant about that. From portals opening up to ghosts to demons to UFOs to aliens to skinwalkers themselves. But in his opinion, the action was very sporadic. When you looked into all of this, was there a time when there was more action than less? Or was there always something going on there? No, it was very cyclical. Um, and to get back to John, amazing, amazing guy. He's 100% correct. In fact, he termed, he, he coined the term precognitive intelligence, which is exactly what it is we're dealing with. It's something that it seems like it knows what you're thinking before you actually think it. And that's pretty creepy. Um, it's, it, is it really doing that or is it just manipulating time? I don't know. Could be one and the same, but uh, yeah, John Alexander is definitely, you know, aware. Um, I think what we're dealing with is something that, is able to at least manipulate time and space as our minds can judge it. And in your, I only say that. Uh -huh, go go ahead. ahead. Well, I was just going to say, uh, in, in regards to that, do you feel that that it, whatever it is, is something that you can you can put a, a name to or or is it just some sort of energy rather than an entity i think that's where our faults as humans come in as we we start to try to like name it and that's where we start to just get hung up and we lose it you know just like gold dust through our fingers it's um whatever it is is almost elemental in nature. So this barren landscape and the emanating power lines and the water seeping from the reservoir down through the sandstone into the fields below, all these characteristics plus like the tribal legends and the hauntings and the ghost lights, you know, all of this, I think multiplying upon one another has really caused a unique phenomena that if you go about it right, it's, it's, it's just like a magical mystery tour when you go out there. It's, you know, I literally go out monthly and that's just by need. And I just, I just, I just feel that need to, to just engage and just witness or interact in some way, shape or form with something that can't be explained. It's hard to it's 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 difficult but yeah it's, it's pretty cool all right let's get to some audience questions here because they are piling up let's start off with uncle dale and his mustache you never know who's actually asking the question and uncle dale is asking do you think it eats or preys on fear i believe that that's it's 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 course of choice is is fear or extreme joy one of the two explain that well it's it's dark it's very dark but it it tends to try to milk your 
your, your, your soul really of those emotions at the time of having them. So it, um, for example, I, I was with some friends and they were most scared of regular police coming out in an area where it just wasn't possible. And it just, you know, I was like, how's this, this is just not, this is not a good vibe. And immediately like these red and blue lights started coming over the horizon um, through these rocky ridge lines where there's no road and they're coming at a high rate of speed and you can hear I mean, almost alien, Sumerian, ancient lost language type sounding thing coming through a metallic bullhorn down into the ravine where we're hidden and you know, it's just coming and uh, I'm, I'm like, no, I, I know that this isn't possible because there's no road there. There's rocks and sides of Volkswagen Beetles everywhere. And it's right towards us. And then it just sort of pixels out at about 75 yards. Um, and you're kind, of, you're kind of getting a little muffled on us there, my friend. Yeah, it just kind of pixeled out on us. And yeah, like a hologram. So I don't know. All right, let's move on to other questions. Jade is asking, Ryan, where do you think these entities are coming from and why? Have you found any commonalities with other areas that have similar paranormal activity, such as magnetic anomalies or geographical features? Fascinating question. Yes, these entities, um, to answer both questions, I have. In my uh, estimation, there's similar, similarities to places like the Bradshaw Ranch in Arizona. The Bradshaw Ranch has uh, similar formations nearby. It's very desolate. Uh, similar things happen, but they aren't as negative as they are in certain areas of the Uinta Basin. And from, from what I've gathered, uh, these tend to be plasma based intelligences at some level. And what I mean by that is I remember one night I was, you shouldn't really ever research alone. I highly advise don't do that, but I was out alone and, and I remember that there was this very common light that you would see that would like kind of roam the ridge lines, and it seemed to be looking for something. And this thing seemed to be on to me. And I remember it was getting closer and closer. And at one point, I started running. And I felt it was really this warm water inside of a water balloon, like thrown at you and just breaking on your back. And right when I felt that, I could see this light behind me, like light my whole shadow up as I was running. And the intensity of it, I was like, I could feel uh, the intensity of the light as well. So I, even though I didn't get a glance, I would say that that was possibly plasma-like, and a lot of the individuals that I've spoken with have mentioned that that could possibly be like, oh, there's, there's, there's a variety of names for it, but it's, it's, it's almost like a plasmic or an ectoplasmic interaction. Um, and I, 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 things that I've never believed in you know, and until you experience it. Right. Let's move on to another question. Tripp is asking, did you find anything in your truck when you had your experience that the skinwalker left behind? You know, it's so interesting you ask that because um, I was immediately told to just get rid of the truck. And that's exactly what I did. So I, I really didn't even check. I just got rid of it. 
did you just not feel safe in driving it any longer? Is that what it was? Yeah, it, um, basically I was told either you have to go through absolutely everything or just get rid of the truck and getting rid of the truck seemed like the safer choice. Did you feel it was cursed? You know, not necessarily. I just, just wanted to be safe. All right, let's move on. Joey is asking about the Navajo belief that skinwalkers are practiced men of tribal medicine who secretly take their their actions a step further to an evil purpose in order to gain certain powers such as shape-shifting, initiation of which requires a horrible act of violence to be done to consecrate the initiation. The Navajo do not speak openly about this when asked, have any of them shared that with you? Um, he is so he, he, completely on uh, point. Yes, there's as far as uh, the power structure that he describes, it would be very similar to that. It would be not un sim- not, not dissimilar to uh, a almost like a secret society where where they they value certain things more than others, you know, within any culture. And right. um, it's it's amazing, yeah. A lot of the communications I get are usually from one towards another. So like, and and in many times they're related, like no kidding. Like sometimes it'll be like a brother versus a brother. And it's, it's, it's crazy. It's, it's very interesting, but yeah, it's, it's not like, unlike any other culture. I was talking with a First Nations friend of mine today about that. And up here, a lot of the First Nations have to deal with little people. And he was telling me just the other day, about a week or two ago, that his mom had a bunch of things start going missing in their house. So he had to make an offering to these little people because her jewelry was going missing and other things were going missing. And so they had they had placed all of these items that they were gifting to the little people on this table, surrounded it with white candles and sage. They woke up the next morning and all their items were back. Kind of makes you wonder, maybe we should be listening to the First Nations just a little bit more. Ryan, you hold on. We're going to go to break here at the bottom of the hour. Talking Skinwalker Ranch with Ryan Burns. More coming up right after this. You're listening to Spaced Out Radio Live with Dave Scott on the Deep Talk Radio Network. Hi there, this is Geraldine Orozco from San Francisco's Bay Area Meditation. I invite you to join me the first Tuesday of every month with Dave Scott for Spaced Out Radio's The Spiritual You. In this fast-paced world we live in, it's time for you to take some time for you. We'll cover every possible subject from powerful meditation to healing techniques to your own intuition and spirituality. So come join us for The Spiritual You. Hello, this is your guitar man, Ron Bumblefoot Thaw, and I have to tell you, I love the response I get for Little Brother is Watching from Spaced Out Radio fans. It's amazing how music can inspire and make people think deeper about what's going on in the supernatural world. You can head over to my website, bumblefoot.com, to check out my music, my guitar workshops, my touring, even check out some of the hot sauces that I'm working on. And make sure you keep on listening, because with Spaced Out Radio, you know Little Brother is Watching. Coming soon to our website, spacedoutradio.com, is the SOR Space Travelers Club. For just five bucks a month, you can get into a private area on our site where you can hang with other listeners in our chat room, post in our forum, and check out a bunch of exclusive content and store that won't be found anywhere else, including a nightly after show party with Dave. It's going to be the best $5 a month you're going to spend. The SOR Space Travelers, only at spacedoutradio.com. 
A timepiece is a reflection of who you are. And what better way to show off the real you than with an Escape watch? Escape is a lifestyle brand accessorizing your days and nights. Choose to escape and create the life of discovery that you deserve. Dream, play, unite with your own personalized Escape watch. Head to escapewatches.com. There is no time like the present to enjoy your escape. Use promo code SMF2017 for your 20% discount today. Visit purpleplates.com today. For over 40 years, the Purple Energy Plates have been delivering amazing results for their many customers. Inspired by the great genius Nikola Tesla, the harmony, healing, and energetic effects of the plates have proven over and over to be beneficial and often miraculous to thousands of customers. Check their site for daily specials and choose from their many energy products. You won't be sorry. Visit them today at purpleplates.com. You hear footsteps in the empty room above you. A rocking chair begins rocking by itself. Don't be afraid of the things that go bump in the night. Reach for Spirit Story Box. The iPhone app the Huffington Post UK called the only ghost hunting app you will ever need. Spirit Story Box. The spirits are telling their stories. Are you listening? Hi, George Nori here. Are you ready for UFO Megacon, the immersion event? Seven days, eight nights, 50 new speakers, UFO military witnesses, experiencer groups, sky watches, and so much more. Join me at UFO Megacon, March 24th through the 30th in Laughlin, Nevada. Truly the one and only new information conference of the year. Now check it out at ufomegacon.com. That's ufomegacon.com. Are you intrigued by Paranormal Talk Radio? You'll love the new Paranormal Radio app from TalkStream Live. You'll find a great selection of talk shows covering UFOs, ghosts, strange phenomena, and much more. Download the Paranormal Radio app now and start listening to the very best in Paranormal Talk entertainment, including the network you're listening to right now. The Paranormal Radio app, free in Google Play and the iOS App Store. Looking for a place to advertise at a very reasonable cost? Look no further than Spaced Out Radio. SpacedOutRadio.com has an advertising tab that you can click to check out our daily, weekly, and monthly packages to play on the radio or our website including social media. From commercial spots to banners, we have it all. Check out our competitive pricing today. Did you know Spaced Out Radio runs seven days a week? Hi there, this is Tessa Nicole Thomas, and I'm here to take you on a paranormal journey each Saturday and Sunday night. Why change the station when you have it all right here? Together, we'll hang out and share some strange and scary stories. And don't forget, we have Psychic Sundays as well, so come tune in Spaced Out Weekend. We get going at 9 p.m. Pacific, midnight Eastern, only at spacedoutradio.com, where we own the night. We're bringing scientific thought to the paranormal. Hi there. This is Spaced Out Radio scientist Chris Cogswell. Join me, Chris Zuger, and Dave Scott the second Wednesday of every month where we break down the who from the woo when it comes to everything paranormal. We'll investigate and try to bring sensible answers to those straight and sometimes outlandish questions people have. Hey, not everything has an answer, but we'll do our best. Listen in to Reality Paranormal only on Spaced Out Radio. So, you love talk radio, then you'll love TalkStreamLive.com. TalkStream Live is always on, 24-7, with the best streaming talk shows. Find your favorite talkers and discover some new ones. It's free, readily available online, or on mobile with any smartphone or tablet. Finding your favorite talk shows all in one place has gotten a whole lot easier. Just go to TalkStreamLive.com. Be sure to download the free apps from Google Play or the iTunes App Store. Heading to Vancouver and looking for a night on the town? The Moose Vancouver is the bar that never stops rocking until 2 a.m. every night. The Moose has great food with everything on the menu from $6.95 to $8.95. Fantastic, vibrant staff and rock and roll that will bring you back to when the music was real, the hair was long, and the guitars were rocking. Get your party on at the Moose Vancouver, the official party bar of Spaced Out Radio. 
Are you tired of being blocked, shadow banned, or placed in jail for simply posting your thoughts on social media? Social Media Freedom can take care of that for you. Social Media Freedom is the newest and one of the best free new apps that allows you the freedom to post what you want, when you want. It takes seconds to download from your app store. Come join the tribe at Social Media Freedom. It's time to set yourself free. past the halfway point of Spaced Out Radio tonight. I am your host, Dave Scott. Thank you so much for tuning us on in. What a great night indeed on this hump day. We are talking Skinwalker Ranch with Ryan Burns. Before we bring Ryan back on, I want to remind you a great way to support this show is to head on over to our website, spacedoutradio.com. We're not looking for donations. We're not one of those types of shows. No. But We want to make sure you get something in return. Head to our store, pick up a T-shirt, a hat, coffee mug, hoodie, you name it, we got it at the Spaced Out Radio store at our website. So go check it on out. Ryan Burns is our guest tonight. We are talking Skinwalker Ranch. And Ryan, you know, sometimes some of the best conversations happen during the break. And right before we were coming back from commercial, we were talking about animals, about dogs, about the way they can sense something weird and strange. The police officers around that area or the security around that area, do they rely heavily on dogs? Has there ever been any reaction? Absolutely. Um, at the actual ranch itself, uh, the Utah UFO Ranch right there in the center, and other ranches as well um, nearby, they basically, they... they they, they say nothing can compare to what they call a biosensor, which is a dog. And these dogs can sense this entity coming through whenever it's coming through somehow that their technology, at least to this point, has, has failed to do. Yeah, I know there's an old trapper up here who has a couple of hunting dogs with him. And this gentleman who has literally, literally been, you know, around a lot of big animals, a lot of big animals, bears, grizzly, black bears, grizzly bears, moose, cougars, lynx, bobcats, a lot of animals up here that could harm you. And he's also had around his trapping sites encounters with Sasquatch and his dogs have been around they don't seem to be bothered but there's this one creature up here we don't know what it is we're only assuming that it could be potentially a a dog man or something like that that literally literally will not allow his dogs to go off their porch the dogs are freaked out they are staying right there and if that if they even sense this creature they don't even want to go outside even if they have to go to the bathroom so i mean it's it's very difficult and you know pets they seem to have this innate sixth sense to pick up on this type of potential danger absolutely yeah the um the myers who were the original family that sold to the shermans who then sold to bigelow when when the Shermans purchased this particular ranch, um, the one that is so famous, even though I'm telling you, all the properties in the area are equally as active. But when the Shermans were touring the property on their own, they realized that there were these massive chains both to the front and back door uh, of the home. Uh, and that these would go to, obviously, you could see the markings of like large dogs to almost like protect the house. And, you know, that's pretty extreme. Uh, there was also, you know, boltings on the inside and the outside of the house, you know, dependent on, I guess, the situation. Um, and they were also told not to dig the property. And 
what research has found uh, through NIDS, the National Institute for Discovery Science, um, Bigelow, uh, Colm Keller, and his um, group of scientists and the time that they really put in there, what they found is that actually messing with the ground, disturbing the ground, digging, has an effect. So this elemental entity is disrupted, disturbed, kind of, kind of, kind of pissed off when, when digging takes place and activity tends to spike. So there's some interesting aspects to the, to the dirt itself. Trip wants to know in the chat room, have you been able to tell the difference between a skinwalker and shadow people? Very similar at all. I'm going to go just a little bit into that. And I, the reason I think they're similar is um, the gin theory that I gathered from some scientists that worked with NIDS without naming names came because the, the gin is obviously sometimes spoken of as manifesting from like a smoke or a fire. And in fact, it's called a smokeless fire you know, like these, this black mist that becomes things. And <clears throat> um, some of these shadow creature type formations actually tend to become material formations in some of these sightings. Um, on one sighting, I was with another researcher, and we, we saw, this is so crazy, we saw these three silver balls that were coming directly over us. And these are these same lights that are commonly seen flashing 180 degrees in different directions on the ridge line. But here it is, you know, six feet above our heads and it flashed down on us. And I remember we looked down and we could see our, our uh, feet and we were all hunkered down and we could feel the heat off of this thing. And it, um, went over just a hair over this little crack in the ridge and it landed and the other researcher saw where it went. So we walked over there and it wasn't far from us, but it started to swirl kind of like a dust devil and then turned into the shape of a dog and we were horrified and then it kind of like readjusted and it made me realize like maybe we're dealing with something out of this world. So maybe some nanotechnology from another planet, small little, um, this is a theory that some of the scientists have come across as nanoparticles basically. So I don't know, but it's, it's, it's intriguing. Let's move on here. Joey is asking, just an observation, Ryan, but you have a couple of times mentioned time slips. In discussions with some Navajo rangers, with him, they have mentioned this very occurrence in their own patrols, seemingly traveling an additional 25 miles and gaining the equivalent travel time while simply driving along. Talk about your time slips, if you don't mind. Yep. And um, Navajo Rangers, awesome guys. Very cool. I've, I've met them. They're amazing. The time slips, I think these, these dimensional saboteurs or these dimensional bandits, whatever you want to call them, they're, these entities are able to do things that others are not. And I, I bring up the time slip thing because, you know, you have missing time. You have time go faster or slower than usual. A very common occurrence is, you know, for kids, pick up a digital watch if you go to the area. You know, spend a couple bucks at your family dollar, pick up a digital watch, go to the area, and see if it changes time when you get there. Um, what else? Uh, there's distortions quite often, even with cell phones. Um, the time can change. Um, and I, I think what we're dealing with is on some level, it's basically in the area where energy is able to manifest 
coagulate and dissolve as fast as possible. So it, 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 it can come about and it can disappear just, you know, with the same ease. And I think that whatever it is we're dealing with can manipulate time. Uh, a very common occurrence and one that's happened at Skinwalker Ranch in the past is a camera that is filming another camera that's filming another camera can't catch when one camera is destroyed by this entity. So even though there's a live feed on it, when the damage is done, it happens so quickly that all you see is wires disappear or fragments of, you know, and I think that particular instance or example kind of shows what you're dealing with, something that can manipulate time. Do you think it might have something to do with any type of vortexes in the area, a different pull on gravity? I don't know. I'm not a scientist, but I'm just wondering if there's any natural phenomenon that could occur there that would cause that to happen. You know, I, I was told from a, a very high source, um, a contact that is in intelligence and um, that at any given time, there are areas of interest. And uh, at one point, I believe, well, I won't get into the specifics of where they were at, but um, this particular area the Skinwalker Ranch was given an SAP protocol. And what that means in government terms is something with a SAP protocol would be something similar to mobilization of the president under extreme measures. So pretty high protocol for, you know, just a ranch. And um, when it was given this protocol, it's it a lot of heads turned you know behind the scenes because that means it's an area of like extreme interest and that the powers that be are able to do a lot more than is usually possible so it, it, it it's really happening all right, let's move on to another question here. And this one continues from Joey, who is asking, did you ever hear any of the voices people said they have heard at the ranch supposedly begging for help? You know, um, the one that is uh, that I have heard that is very common is the water babies. Areas of irrigation or moving water tend to have this phenomenon that is known as a water baby that sounds like a crying baby, you know, in the middle of the night near a water source, any good Samaritan, similar to like my discrepancy picking up the hitchhiker, any good Samaritan would surely go and check on a, you know, baby crying near a water source. And this is something you want to avoid. You don't want to go anywhere near anything that sounds like a baby crying near any water source anywhere around uh, this particular area. So that comes to mind. Um, there's also another one called the Whistler, which is an entity that just kind of walks boundary lines typically, which is strange because it's the only one that seems to uh, care about where your fence lines are. And <clears throat> this was not on Skinwalker Ranch. But this one would basically walk the fence line of this uh, rancher's property and whistle. And um, also they tried not to interact with it. It got really weird when they did interact. All right, let's move on here. In regards to other creatures that have been seen in the area outside of the Skinwalker, what have people claimed to have seen. We know of the UFOs, we know of the Skinwalker, but what else is there? Um, some of my favorites are the the reptiles, the um, raptor-like creatures, which are basically like little mini T-Rexes roaming the land. Um, 
I haven't seen any of that myself, but I did one evening see something that appeared to be like probably a good six foot long, you know, like a horny toad type is the closest thing I would, you know, like a large high desert lizard. But when you're comparing it to the landscape, it just doesn't equate. So again, you know, are these things manipulating our minds, mind melding us, making us see things that aren't there or, you know, as many scientists that have worked on the property that have seen, you know, dinosaur-like creatures, you know, and these are guys with PhDs from the best universities in the country. And, um, you know, to say something like that is really, really putting it on the line for them. So I do believe that there's some strange creatures out there. What about Bigfoot sightings? Dogman? A lot, a lot of Bigfoot sightings. Um, Some of my favorite Bigfoot sightings are those who uh, the um, Sherman saw, which included, you know, a Bigfoot wearing kind of like flashy gear and something like moon boots. And but no, there's 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 a ton of Bigfoot sightings in the area, just a ton. Oh, wow. Are they usually around people or are they usually around areas where there is nobody around or water sources? Right in the middle. Yeah. So like the most common water is always an element, uh, protein sources, you know, um, I, as the BFRO says, you want to basically follow protein sources. So the the um, the Bigfoot sightings that I've taken part in have always been right on the outskirts of highly populated areas or somewhat populated areas and complete desolation. So, you know, just those bordering areas. Now, up here in British Columbia and along the West Coast, the Bigfoot seem to have more of a docile type attitude around here from people who have seen them. And there doesn't seem to be much of a of a, of a real issue when people have that encounter. But in regards to what they are in Utah... Do we see a lot more aggressiveness because the skinwalkers are more aggressive, because the paranormal activity seems to be a little bit darker? How do we see those creatures react? You know, I I, I have a I can only speak of a couple of instances where the possible culprit could have been a Bigfoot. Um which were personal instances. And in those instances, in my opinion, both were, well, one was, one, one was, one retreated quite quickly up, up a tree and then disappeared, which, which tended to, you know, we, we believed it was dimensional at, the, at that point. The other one, um, to be perfectly honest, I, I just, I was on horseback and I, I couldn't catch it. I mean, it was just too fast, which is unfathomable, you know, when you're on a good quality horse that just wants to go and, and you can't catch something like that. So those are my only two experiences of something like that. And, you know, again, I want to say that that's again, you know, manipulating the circumstances of its display to the observer in some way, shape or form that in our comprehension would be explained as like time manipulation. Right. Right. Let's move on here. we got a few more questions. Joey's asking, Ryan, have you been cautioned not to speak of skinwalkers aloud, particularly while traveling through the desolate areas? Absolutely. The... When I, when I first moved to the area, I actually was going to work as a um, 
outdoor guide for troubled teens. And I was told a story of another guide that um, was infatuated with the whole skinwalker phenomenon. I would say the word often. And just by him saying the word, he uh, ended up having a ton of bad luck, um, ended up institutionalized, lost everything. It was a tragic, and you hear this, it's quite frequent um, in this phenomenon. You know, it's, it's, it's hard to stay Teflon. It's, it, it sticks. Um, one of the most common phenomena that a lot of us in the field tend to, we call it the hitchhiker, which is this phenomenon of, you know, when you've been to these places thousands of times, what ends up happening is you have these kind of like parasitic hitchhikers that come home with you. And what they are is sort of a, a drag. Uh, they, they, they basically kind of latch onto you, come home with you, and they kind of like drag onto your body. And a ton of researchers that are really deep into this have complained of that, you know, like physical um, ailments, uh, lack of energy, um, actual hauntings, shadow people in their own home, uh, poltergeist activity in their own home, th- things of that nature. And, you know, really? I had that happening. Yeah, I had that happening a ton when I lived, you know, 15, 20 minutes away from the ranch. And incredible that. Yeah, that's one of the reasons I actually kind of moved a little further away. I don't blame you. I'm going to get you to hold on right there, Ryan. Ryan Burns is our guest tonight on Spaced Out Radio. We got him for another 30 minutes. We're going to be talking more Skinwalker Ranch. What is going on there? Do we know what the phenomena is? And your questions as well. Stay tuned for hour number three coming up right around the corner. At spacedoutradio.com, we have a little bit of everything for you to stay up late. So while you're there, check out our SOR Newswire, where our team brings you stories of the weird and strange to the WTF from around the globe. News on Bigfoot, UFOs, paranormal, Darwinian-type crime tales. It's the stories that the mainstream media usually won't touch. Well, we got them all on the SOR Newswire, only at spacedoutradio.com. Come hang out with Spaced Out Radio, where we own the night. This is Carl. You can follow Dave on Twitter, at Spaced Out Radio, and during the show, use the hashtag Spaced Out Radio to chat with us live. On Instagram, at Dave Scott SOR. On Facebook, give our page a like, Spaced Out Radio Show. SOR archives are free on YouTube, at Spaced Out Radio. Come join us, or I will come join you. See you at your window. You're listening to Spaced Out Radio Live with Dave Scott on the Deep Talk Radio Network. We are getting ready to relaunch the SOR Space Travelers Club at spacedoutradio.com. For $5 a month, you can join us for a plethora of features found nowhere else. Hang out in a private chat room during the show and after party. You can check out some exclusive content and a store specifically for you as well as a private listener forum where you can post your thoughts, stories, and pictures. The SOR Space Travelers Club, coming soon to spacedoutradio.com. Visit purpleplates.com today. For over 40 years, the Purple Energy Plates have been delivering amazing results for their many customers. Inspired by the great genius Nikola Tesla, the harmony, healing, and energetic effects of the plates have proven over and over to be beneficial and often miraculous to thousands of customers. Check their site for daily specials and choose from their many energy products. You won't be sorry. Visit them today at purpleplates.com. Hey, this is Canadian Paranormal Investigator Mike Moore. The third Wednesday of every month, I'll be teaming up with Dave Scott to bring you Ghosts of the Great White North. Each month, we will bring on guests from across Canada to discuss their ghostly encounters. 
Canada's a paranormal hotbed with stories you've never heard, so we're going to bring them to you. So get comfy in your Chesterfield, grab a donut, and join us, eh? Hi, George Nori here. Are you ready for UFO Megacon, the immersion event? Seven days, eight nights, 50 new speakers, UFO military witnesses, experiencer groups, sky watches, and so much more. Join me at UFO Megacon, March 24th through the 30th in Laughlin, Nevada. Truly the one and only new information conference of the year. Now check it out at ufomegacon.com. That's ufomegacon.com. The freedom to post what you want, when you want. That's the social media freedom you need. Social Media Freedom is the free app in your app store. No need to worry about going to jail or being shadow banned any longer. It's the freedom to say what you feel. The freedom to know Big Brother isn't watching. It's the way social media is supposed to be. Social Media Freedom. It's time to set yourself free. Download from your app store today. On the first Tuesday of every month, I encourage you to come along for a journey with me, Geraldine Orozco, on The Spiritual You. Together, we will take a look at how to access the highest expression of yourself and change your life, consciousness, ET contact, health, and wellness. We can talk about it all. So come along for a spiritual ride with me, Geraldine Orozco, on The Spiritual You, only on Spaced Out Radio. Find your escape where time has no limits. It's about living today and cherishing the heritage of yesterday. A spirit of adventure for what is new with the nostalgia of the past. Your timepiece is a reflection of who you are. Life surrounded by beauty from the world around us to the soul within. EscapeWatches.com There is no time like the present to enjoy your escape. Use promo code SMF2017 for your 20% discount today. You know, it's hard being the bad man of ufology, but that's just the way that I like it. This is Chris George Zuger, and I'll be hanging out with Dave Scott and SOR scientist Chris Cogswell for Reality Paranormal, the second Wednesday of every month. And our job is to break it down and come to conclusions as to what is really going on in the supernatural world. I'd love for you to join us right here on Spaced Out Radio. So, you love talk radio, then you'll love TalkStreamLive.com. TalkStream Live is always on, 24-7, with the best streaming talk shows. Find your favorite talkers and discover some new ones. It's free, readily available online, or on mobile with any smartphone or tablet. Finding your favorite talk shows all in one place has gotten a whole lot easier. Just go to TalkStreamLive.com. Be sure to download the free apps from Google Play or the iTunes App Store. Looking for a place to advertise at a very reasonable cost? Look no further than Spaced Out Radio. SpacedOutRadio.com has an advertising tab that you can click to check out our daily, weekly, and monthly packages to play on the radio or our website including social media. From commercial spots to banners, we have it all. Check out our competitive pricing today. You hear footsteps in the empty room above you. A rocking chair begins rocking by itself. Don't be afraid of the things that go bump in the night. Reach for Spirit Story Box. The iPhone app the Huffington Post UK called the only ghost hunting app you will ever need. Spirit Story Box. The spirits are telling their stories. Are you listening? Get your horns up with me on Spaced Out Radio. This is Ron Bumblefoot Thaw. Come tune in to SOR where you can hear me rock out with Little Brother is Watching, the official theme song of Spaced Out Radio. And then come on over to Bumblefoot.com where you can find out about my tour schedule, my music, and everything else. Bumblefoot.com keeps you up to date on what I'm doing and the best way to stay in touch with my music and music camps. Sign up for my newsletter at Bumblefoot.com and remember, Little Brother is Watching. The Call of the Wild is in Vancouver. The Moose Vancouver is one of the hottest bars and restaurants in the city. Open until 2 a.m. nightly, the Moose will rock you like a hurricane all night long. 
Great food with everything on the menu at $6.95. Near the corner of Nelson and Granville, get your horns up and come rock with us. The Moose Vancouver, the official rocking bar of Spaced Out Radio. Would you like to connect with us? Head to spacedoutradio.com for all your latest show info. Now, back to Dave Scott and SOR. Welcome back to the third and final hour of Spaced Out Radio tonight. I am your host, Dave Scott. Thank you so much for being with us. Tomorrow night on the show, we head up to Alaska. Michael Thompson, a former police officer, retired, now hunts Bigfoot. We're going to learn all about it tomorrow night, 9.06 Pacific, 12.06 a.m. Eastern at spacedoutradio.com. Hi to everyone listening in on our terrestrial affiliates, KDUN AM 1030 in Reedsport, Oregon, KZFX 93.7 FM in Ridgecrest, California, WQEE 99.1 FM in Noonan, Georgia, and UPRN 107.7 FM in New Orleans. On the digital side, hi to everyone in Deep Talk Radio Land and on Revolution Radio. Good to have you with us. Don't forget, you can check out all of our archives for free. And just go to youtube.com forward slash spaced out radio. Just do old Davy the favor. Hit that subscribe button. The Desert Clam has set the password for tonight in the SOR Space Travelers Club. Obnubilate. Obnubilate is your password. Make sure you use it wisely, Space Travelers, as the Clam sets the password each and every night right here on the mighty SOR. Our website, spacedoutradio.com, has a plethora of features for you. Rock out to Bumblefoot. While you're listening to the show, a great way to support us and what we do is to go shopping at our store, pick up a T-shirt, hat, hoodies, you name it, we got it. And, of course, read up on Captain Shirk's SOR Newswire and so much more. For the final time tonight, we introduce our guest, Ryan Burns. He is the author of a pair of books regarding the Skinwalker Ranch. You can get them both on Amazon, one called Skinwalker and Beyond, the other, the Utah UFO Ranch. Ryan, thank you so much for being with us. Really appreciate you taking the time. Absolutely. Thank you for having me on. And I, I should probably mention there, should, there, there will be another book. I, already, I just sent it to the publisher, so there should be another book out within the month. Very nice. Very nice. And I got to get a shameless plug in here for you, man, because outside mm-hmm. of this, you have in that area a beautiful bread and or bread bed and breakfast that people can check on out and actually go fishing and take tours of the area. You do all this stuff called the Strawberry River Bed and Breakfast. Tell us about that. Yeah, it's a bed and breakfast right there, right in the smack in the middle of Skinwalker territory. It was. I mean, it's depending on how you drive, it's 20 minutes from the ranch, you know. Um, but it is, you know, an area that, you know, I visited the all these hot spots thousands of times, and then I'd come back home, and this is where I used to live. And it's an area where I used to have guests, and some of these guests, everything from special forces to NASA people to uh, department of defense individuals that would like some of them honestly to show up and be like, Hey, you need to take me to the ranch and you know, and no problem. And they wanted a nice place to stay and I would take them to the ranch and they'd go there. And I, I, I would see these individuals literally go up and like give people orders and whatever and come back, you know, jump in my truck and we'll go back to the B and B and they'd go fishing the next day or whatever. But, this is like a very real phenomenon. And what ended up happening is being in these hotspots so many times, I started bringing these things back with me home, these hitchhikers we were talking about. And um, I started having TV shows showing up and friends showing up and agents showing up and people that I would never imagine that would show up to show up and like watch this stuff. And I'm like, Oh, I totally get it. You know, this is exactly what I do. But um, I guess these things follow you home and they tend to congregate. And I recently renovated the whole bed and breakfast to see if that would get rid of it. And the people that were there renovating had just a ton of experiences that freaked them out. Um, For example, one day I get a call and it's like, we just saw an alien in your house. And it's like, what are you talking about? (laughs) Like, you, You can't not just call me and say that. And, um, 
you know, this, this individual who knew nothing about me came with uh, another person who was checking on the landscaping in the backyard and they were turning on faucets and such. And they saw basically what looked like an alien gray looking out at them from the home. And, um, and then just a bunch of other things from the workers themselves. And it's, it's really freaky. So, you know, it got to a point where I just, many factors were considered, but I just realized, you know, this is a unique experience. I need to share this with people. So, Oh, damn it. If you got, if you got an alien showing up at the window, I am so going, I am so going. I had actually that happen during my radio show one night. It's phenomenal. That's how we got our, our mascot, Carl. It, it's something about the windows, isn't it? I swear. Oh, yeah. Oh, it's yeah. Like yeah. Absolutely. Absolutely. Hey, in regards to getting to more audience questions, I want to post a couple here for you. And this one comes from Joe. He's asking, are skinwalkers primarily around the Navajo reservations in Utah and surrounding states, or have they been reported in Northern California or the state of Washington? Do they ever manifest as deer or owls? Now, I I do have to preface this. Joe never admits that he's been taken. He's a frequent listener, one of our great listeners, and I keep telling him, Joe, you've been taken. So don't fall for the owls or deer stuff with him. He's got nice hair. Joe has great hair, but don't fall for the deer or owl stuff because he's already been taken. He just doesn't want to admit it. You know, it's interesting you say that because all of his comments tend to uh, ride that same track of manifestation. So absolutely, Joe, the... um what I like to call that the, the, they can manifest as deer, the deer the shifted walkers, as I like to call them, are very common in Duchesne, Utah, which is very close proximity to the area we're talking about. And these deer shifted walkers are exactly that. They're just they're just they're just men with the head of a deer. And um, you know, very very similar to like the Wendigo of uh lore but to get back to his question i think he also mentioned and the area is absolutely utah new mexico arizona um you know the ship rock area the areas surrounding uh, a lot of areas in new mexico uh areas in colorado in the san luis valley areas in the uina basin which you know, I think the Una Basin has kind of been the sleeper on this one. And by that, I mean, you know, it's similar to like, you know, how Vegas was hit last with like the real estate market. That's where like all of a sudden everybody's looking at it. It's like, whoa, look at that. And it's like, that's kind of what happened on the paranormal perspective, because that's kind of been the sleeper. Everybody's kind of known this is going on, but it's been in the back burner for so long that at this point we have, you know, actual defense money going into the advanced aerial threat interpretation programs and identification programs and assessments of threats of at this point. I mean, literally what's happening is we're playing a coconut shell game of, you know, letters and, they're changing the names of these quote unquote groups that are studying UFO phenomena faster than you can track them. So even though it might be the same group with the same players, they just changed the name. And what's, what's interesting is (laughs) there's multiple other organizations involved with that. But anyway, back to, Back to topic. Well, let's get to another question. This one comes from Kevin. He says, do you think it's possible skinwalkers are just malnourished and dehydrated Bigfoot sighted in the desert areas? You know, I'm not closed-minded enough to believe that there's not examples of that that, that take place. 
I, I, I believe that there are examples of that. But in this particular case, I think we may be dealing with actual, quote unquote, elemental terrestrial magic of elemental dimensional characteristics involved. And witchcraft that has found a way to tap into that uh, or possibly elaborate on that somehow. Um, but I, I think, you know, it happens. So I'm, I'm not against that possibility. When you're out at your bed and breakfast in the basin there, Trip wants to know, you ever hear any weird clicking type noises, much like the movie Signs, you know? Oh my gosh, there's been so many things. Um, everything from actually getting pictures of those Moki, those little people that you're talking about. Um seeing small troll-like things at night almost on a weekly basis. We have what can only be described as a Bigfoot crossing the river behind the, the B&B. And, you know, it's done, you name it. It's People have seen it. Uh, UFOs that come up over the ridgeline. Uh, guests that have seen it, some of which will probably come forward soon and are quite famous. Um, what else? Uh, you name it. I, a lot of strange things that can only be described as entity attachments. But then again, the property itself was all, you know, always kind of described as being haunted. And the canyon behind it is called the Devil's Soup Bowl, which um, has kind of been a place where you know, it's kind of like keep your kids out of the devil's soup bowl. They'll see things. They'll experience things. They'll, they may have, like, entities try to talk to them. This has been taking place for about 100 years. So, um, unbeknownst to me. But, you know, it all makes sense now. But it, it, uh, it you know, just luck of the draw. Uh, an area that, well, anyway there's an area of the property that I can't even get into there. There's a lot of strange stuff. And, you know, uh, I've had visitors, MIB type visitors show up some cut on video camera that are using, I don't know what they're doing, scanning areas. And, you know, I, so oh, some of these individuals have been identified and we know who they work for. And it is what it is, but yeah, the whole area is active. Do you get a lot of military activity around there when the sightings are heightened? Um, not necessarily. A lot of the military activity is kind of in the guise of casu uh, business casual. Men in black type stuff? The new men in black is what I like to call them exactly. Um, it's like a business casual, darker element. Uh, you know, they, they drive vehicles that we would perceive as, you know, the black 1969 Cadillac. So they'll show up in a vehicle that is, you know, of that nature to our understanding. So like they're, they're rolling in really sweet Audis. Um, but you still have like, you know, like some strange, aspects of, of, of the extremely pale one that doesn't speak, that has a slightly Eurasian um, aspect to them, and the larger one that seems to be the enforcer, and then the talkative one that it's just very, very cordial. So, you know, they're coming in threes. They're, and, and, you know, the, the thing that giveaway is the hat. And this is something I've incorporated, like, in daily use. I've I had an MIB experience myself and it was very much like, you know, they were wearing the hat. They followed me. I was walking my dog and they were saying strange noises and sounds. And, and when they walked by me, because eventually my dog had to go, I was like, Oh no, this is horrible. 
and I stopped and right when they went by, they, they just kind of giggled at me and the presence did not seem, it just didn't seem quite right to me. So I, I'd always kind of dispelled that whole myth of the men in black until it happened to me type thing. And, you know, the people I was speaking with on the phone that particular evening had unique experiences themselves, which are well-known experiences at this point, but I'm going to wait and not, not go into that. But yeah, there's, there, there's a reality to it. Are you afraid to go there? considering you are so close i mean you have a bed and breakfast are you afraid to take people there do you have to give people warnings yeah like i i i won't take people there um unless they essentially like show me identification that says they can go there but no i won't i won't take people to the ranches you know, I, I, mm-hmm. I, I know all the players involved at this point and it's, um, I wouldn't embarrass myself by putting myself in that situation. You have gnomes running around there? Cause we love the gnomes around here. There really I want, are. And I, I oh, oh, okay. <laughs> yeah, there really are. And there's actual images that, um, yeah, I'll have to shoot them to you somehow. I'll get them to you. Um, but there's actual images of these small, you know, it's almost like a feet, pointy head walking through a field. Well, you know, it's like wonderful, it's very strange. Yeah, the wonderful. size of like a car tire. Yeah. Because I love the gnomes. I am one with the gnomes. So that is just absolutely intriguing regarding that and i know a lot of people were asking that okay well it brings it it's an interesting aspect because it brings the gnome aspect like the whole machine l of like terrence mckenna revival of like these these little managers of our reality that are like constantly like making little changes and you know making sure our reality is staying put instead of just chaos. And, you know, obviously he was under intense, you know, trips, but as a psychonaut, but I think there's a reality to that in a sense, you know, if you consider the Baphomet kind of doing the same thing, dissolving, coagulating, or any of these equating factors or gods with the little G that the Elohim or anything that's kind of making order of the matrix. We only got about five minutes left with you tonight. And I want to get back to Skinwalker Ranch here for just a moment. When you first started going there, you said there was no fencing around. There was nothing around. Now the place is very highly guarded. How close can you now get to the Skinwalker Ranch and how dangerous is it around there? Yeah, you, you definitely don't want to consider trespassing or even clo- getting close to any boundary. Um, you'll know when you're getting close and you do not want to even push the envelope. Is that a private security company or is that military there? You know, anymore, they're kind of one and the same. Uh, the plausible deniability involves with a lot of the subcontractors and the way they're paid. It's just, it's a really good security firm and well-known. And um, they're going to cross cross their T's, dot their I's, and they're going to make sure they get you on anything and everything they can. So it's one of those just don't do it type scenarios. Very, very eerie. I mean, that has to be a little freaky to be in that area, knowing that you're being watched by cameras, you're being watched for everything. And why have it so secure if so many people don't believe there is anything going on? You know, um, it's a matter of, I don't want to say too much. Um, 
is it's that a matter of sa- is that out of your own safety though that you say that? Yeah, it's 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 just uh, it's a matter from from a research perspective. There is a certain amount of uh, United States dollars that are going into research for every second at the ranch. So everything and anything is being monitored within the property limits. So anything that is abstractly um, messing with that in any way, shape, or form, and uh, that could be just about anything. Uh, That could even be an observer, you know, because a lot of the science behind this is that the observer is everything behind the phenomenon. So um, the research taking place there is a lot deeper ingrained and more intense than anybody has any idea of. We got about a minute and a half here before we got to start wrapping things up with you, my friend. And I want to say thank you so much for coming on the show tonight. What a, what an absolute pleasure it's been. In regards to your latest book, what are people going to be able to see in there? And if they come on your tour or they want to go fishing out there, where can they get a hold of you? Um. So the latest book is going to be um, a similar perspective or at least the reality, like through my prism of truth of like my perspective of how I see things um, of the more recent era or the new ownership of the ranch, which is um, Adamantium LLC is the name of the organization, you know, and Adamantium is the mystery metal in the blood of the Wolverine. And we know right now, like UFO community has a lot of meta material, you know, to the stars and a tip, the advanced yes. aerial threat identification program, a lot of meta material, um, focused right now. So keep an eye on that. Uh, yeah, there are connections and, um, It's going to be very interesting coming up. Uh, As far as anybody that wants to be in the area of uh, shapeshifter territory, but not like on the forefront of Skinwalker Ranch and being thrown in jail, if you just want to be in the area and have like a killer, awesome fly fishing stream in your backyard, blue ribbon trout stream, and tons of uh, documented reports. Wonderful. Strange hauntings at the BNB. Yeah, wonderful. We'll get people. We'll, we'll, RyanPatrickBurns.com. Ryan, thank you so much for coming on the show. Really appreciate it. Coming up next on Spaced Out Radio, we got the SOR Newswire. I'll be right back. You're listening to Spaced Out Radio Live with Dave Scott on the Deep Talk Radio Network. Heading to Vancouver and looking for a night on the town? The Moose Vancouver is the bar that never stops rocking until 2 a.m. every night. The Moose has great food with everything on the menu from $6.95 to $8.95. Fantastic, vibrant staff and rock and roll that will bring you back to when the music was real, the hair was long, and the guitars were rocking. Get your party on at the Moose Vancouver, the official party bar of Spaced Out Radio. Hello, this is your guitar man, Ron Bumblefoot Thaw, and I have to tell you, I love the response I get for Little Brother is Watching from Spaced Out Radio fans. It's amazing how music can inspire and make people think deeper about what's going on in the supernatural world. You can head over to my website, bumblefoot.com, to check out my music, my guitar workshops, my touring, even check out some of the hot sauces that I'm working on. And make sure you keep on listening, because with Spaced Out Radio, you know Little Brother is Watching. Did you know Spaced Out Radio runs seven days a week? 
Hi there, this is Tessa Nicole Thomas, and I'm here to take you on a paranormal journey each Saturday and Sunday night. Why change the station when you have it all right here? Together, we'll hang out and share some strange and scary stories. And don't forget, we have Psychic Sundays as well, so come tune in Spaced Out Weekend. We get going at 9 p.m. Pacific, midnight Eastern, only at spacedoutradio.com, where we own the night. Hi there, this is Geraldina Roscoe from San Francisco's Bay Area Meditation. I invite you to join me the first Tuesday of every month with Dave Scott for Spaced Out Radio's The Spiritual You. In this fast-paced world we live in, it's time for you to take some time for you. We'll cover every possible subject from powerful meditation to healing techniques to your own intuition and spirituality. So come join us for The Spiritual You. Coming soon to our website, spacedoutradio.com, is the SOR Space Travelers Club. For just five bucks a month, you can get into a private area on our site where you can hang with other listeners in our chat room, post in our forum, and check out a bunch of exclusive content and store that won't be found anywhere else, including a nightly after show party with Dave. It's going to be the best five dollars a month you're going to spend. The SOR Space Travelers, only at spacedoutradio.com. So, you love talk radio, then you'll love TalkStreamLive.com. TalkStream Live is always on, 24-7, with the best streaming talk shows. Find your favorite talkers and discover some new ones. It's free, readily available online, or on mobile with any smartphone or tablet. Finding your favorite talk shows all in one place has gotten a whole lot easier. Just go to TalkStreamLive.com. Be sure to download the free apps from Google Play or the iTunes App Store. Are you intrigued by Paranormal Talk Radio? You'll love the new Paranormal Radio app from TalkStream Live. You'll find a great selection of talk shows covering UFOs, ghosts, strange phenomena, and much more. Download the Paranormal Radio app now and start listening to the very best in Paranormal Talk entertainment, including the network you're listening to right now. The Paranormal Radio app, free in Google Play and the iOS App Store. Looking for a place to advertise at a very reasonable cost? Look no further than Spaced Out Radio. SpacedOutRadio.com has an advertising tab that you can click to check out our daily, weekly, and monthly packages to play on the radio or our website including social media. From commercial spots to banners, we have it all. Check out our competitive pricing today. You hear footsteps in the empty room above you. A rocking chair begins rocking by itself. Don't be afraid of the things that go bump in the night. Reach for Spirit Story Box. The iPhone app the Huffington Post UK called the only ghost hunting app you will ever need. Spirit Story Box. The spirits are telling their stories. Are you listening? A timepiece is a reflection of who you are. And what better way to show off the real you than with an Escape watch? Escape is a lifestyle brand accessorizing your days and nights. Choose to escape and create the life of discovery that you deserve. Dream, play, unite with your own personalized Escape watch. Head to escapewatches.com. There is no time like the present to enjoy your escape. Use promo code SMF2017 for your 20% discount today. We're bringing scientific thought to the paranormal. Hi there. This is Spaced Out Radio scientist Chris Cogswell. Join me, Chris Zuger, and Dave Scott the second Wednesday of every month where we break down the who from the woo when it comes to everything paranormal. We'll investigate and try to bring sensible answers to those straight and sometimes outlandish questions people have. Hey, not everything is an answer, but we'll do our best. Listen in to Reality Paranormal only on Spaced Out Radio. Visit purpleplates.com today. For over 40 years, the Purple Energy Plates have been delivering amazing results for their many customers. Inspired by the great genius Nikola Tesla, the harmony, healing, and energetic effects of the plates have proven over and over to be beneficial and often miraculous to thousands of customers. Check their site for daily specials and choose from their many energy products. You won't be sorry. Visit them today at purpleplates.com. 
Hi, George and Ori here. Are you ready for UFO Megacon, the immersion event? Seven days, eight nights, 50 new speakers, UFO military witnesses, experiencer groups, sky watches, and so much more. Join me at UFO Megacon, March 24th through the 30th in Laughlin, Nevada. Truly the one and only new information conference of the year. Now check it out at ufomegacon.com. That's ufomegacon.com. Are you tired of being blocked, shadow banned, or placed in jail for simply posting your thoughts on social media? Social Media Freedom can take care of that for you. Social Media Freedom is the newest and one of the best free new apps that allows you the freedom to post what you want, when you want. It takes seconds to download from your app store. Come join the tribe at Social Media Freedom. It's time to set yourself free. third we're heading for home tonight on the mighty sor i'm your host dave scott putting on my newsy hat as i get ready for the weird the wacky the wtf the sor newswire brought to you by paranoia magazine The news is always changing, which is why we bring you the SOR Newswire at the back end of every show, where we get to some of those wild and strange stories that may not make the mainstream, but definitely suit our lovely audience, and you know who you are, getting all excited for stuff like this. But start off with an interesting one, because here's an article that I'd like to ask Ron Bumblefoot Thal, our resident guitar god. How many of you out there play guitar? Well, I have five guitars. I own more guitars than I know in chords. I just love them, though, because they're such beautiful pieces of art. Don't you think? At least that's my opinion. Well, lead singer of the Smashing Pumpkins, Billy Corgan, who, by the way, is also a big UFO guy, big, big UFO guy. I've been trying to get him on this show to talk about UFOs as well as wrestling, because he loves his wrestling as well. He's wondering if guitar paint changes the sound of the electric guitar. Apparently, he is getting a lot of flack amongst the gearheads in the musical scene for even suggesting that a paint color affects the sound of the car. The guitar, pardon me. And He's a little weirded out by this because to him, he's hearing something that a lot of people with very good ears for the tone of a guitar are not hearing. So he's wondering if it's the mixture of nitrocellulose, polyester, polyurethane, and the paint have something to do with the tone. Now, There are some experts out there who are kind of waving their hands on it, saying, well, Billy Corgan's a pretty strange dude, so it doesn't surprise them. There may not be too much to this, but he wants science to look at it. He wants this looked at. Now, I definitely could not tell the difference. I am way too amateur about that. Mike Lewis from Fender says wood is a natural element and one board cut from the same tree could have a different resonant frequency than the next one to it. The only way to hear the difference between lacquer, poly, or red, or black, or thick, or thin is to completely build a guitar, paint it, finish it in that color, then strip it down completely, repaint it with something else, and listen to it, the same piece of wood, pickups, hardware, side by side. That kind of makes sense. Would make a real interesting, interesting experiment, that's for sure. 
I'm going to hit Bumblefoot up on that one. Definitely going to hit Bumblefoot up on that one. Moving on. I don't know if you saw this video out of Turkey. Happened in Adana, Turkey. And if you, this video has gone viral. So if you haven't seen it, it's closed caption footage of this man walking down the street. And all of a sudden, this dude comes out of nowhere as this truck is rolling by, taps the guy on the shoulder. The guy stops and looks and sees this big metal bar from the truck swinging out, about to knock him in the head and in the back. And it, it's swinging at a, you know, it's not swinging fast, but it would have probably knocked the guy out. I don't think it would have killed him. But anyways, Sardar Benitsky narrowly avoided this incident when he was walking down the street along a bunch of shops that were selling food, when he heard someone call out to him and felt a sudden tap on the shoulder, like a hey, and then a type tap. Turned to see who it was, and there was this large metal gate coming right towards him. So he jumped back, missed this this gate or bar, whatever you want to call it, by mere inches. And the weird part about it is, he didn't even see the guy leave. He went and checked the, the video footage and saw the guy walk straight towards him, tap him on the shoulder, almost like the guy knew this was going to happen. And it's very strange. Very strange. Because this dude... Like, literally, the truck comes around this corner, all right? And this guy, the truck hasn't even passed this guy yet. And he's like, tap, tap on the guy's shoulder. And then all of a sudden, this thing happens. Totally weird. Totally weird. Check it out. I'd like to hear your opinion on that. You can message me on Twitter at hashtag Spaced Out Radio. Or on Facebook at our Spaced Out Radio show page. Message me there. Let me know what you think about that footage. It's kind of eerie. Cool, but eerie. All right. Our show is in Utah tonight, as we were talking about Skinwalker Ranch. But we're going to get into something completely different. And Colorado, this time, the fingers are pointed at you. Big headline. Who cares what our family thinks? Uh oh. So, Michael Lee, who's 37, and his cousin Angie, who's 38, former exotic dancer, by the way, say they've been in love since they were children, even caught kissing as youngsters. Angie's dad is the oldest of 12 children, while Michael's mom is his younger sister. Michael says nobody makes him feel as perfect as Angie. Angie's a mom of three. And yes, they are kissing cousins. They are first cousins. So this loving cousin couple wanted to get married. Anything wrong with that? Who's grinding their teeth out there? I can hear it. Yeah. Well, apparently marrying your cousin is illegal in Utah. So they went down to Colorado and tied the knot. Michael chuckled saying, I remember I stopped my aunt one day and said, I'm going to marry Angie. And she said, no, I'm sorry, you can't, but you can be friends. Well, that friends with benefits went a long way. Went a long way. But this has ruffled the feathers of a lot of people who believe this is quite incestual and figure that it shouldn't happen. They're happily married. Let's give them that. They're happily married. but. Your family. There are genetic consequences in case something happens. 
case you have a child. And yet they're thinking about the possibility of having children. Oh, I'm not sure I like this. Don't like where this is going at all. Just kind of weird. Kind of weird. Oh, by the way, now they're going to get political over this. They want Utah to come up with the uh, come up to the times regarding first cousins and marriage because Utah doesn't allow it in law, but they want the law changed now. On their petition, they write, My first cousin and I have been in love with each other our whole lives, but we are prohibited from marrying in the state of Utah where we live. We believe that the law is outdated and it needs to be changed so we can socially legitimize our love. Apparently, only 24 states do not allow marriages between first cousins. 19 allow it, and 7 states allow some marriages between first cousins. Like, really? Really? How can this even be an argument? Why is this even a law or not a law? Oh, weird. Because of that, we need a double fix in Florida. So there's been a lot of tension recently with a lot of people regarding gender. So I'm going to be very, very, you know, how can I put this? Straight and neutral with this one. No pun intended. Florida mother is raising a gender-neutral 11-month-old baby named Sparrow. But they found the word baby too politically incorrect. So because they are a transgender household, which in my opinion, there's nothing wrong with that, They've decided instead of baby that they're calling their daughter or son a baby. They say their child, when the child is older, can choose its own gender if it wants to be boy or girl. Do we really need to change the words on that? The mother says, we do not know what Sparrow's gender is yet, and as regards to her anatomy, we choose to keep that secret except for a small list of caregivers. Well, I think you just give that out because you're calling they be a girl or her. Cute kid, too. Not going to lie. Big blue eyes. It's a beautiful couple, beautiful family. But it's that language. Why do we got to create these words? A baby is a baby. Am I wrong? Who cares if it's a, a transgender couple? Nobody cares. At least I don't. Right? The child will choose, any kid, my son, your daughter, whoever, will choose what they want to be. But do we always have to take that next political step and trying to change the language from baby to they be? I don't know. I don't get that. I don't get that whatsoever. And by the way, how is a they be supposed to choose their gender identity? What's the age on that? I, and I mean that as a serious question. Nothing sarcastic around that. What's the age? They're saying around age four, apparently, for those of you who don't know. Either way, we're moving on. Got one more for you tonight out of Florida. This is not the way you want to pay for a parking ticket. So, Ayub Abdul Rahman, 27 years old, went down to the Almaki Auto Shop in Orange County, Florida, wanted to pay his fee to get his car out of impound. So the employee that he talked to arrived there to allow him into the gates so he could pay his bill and drive off into the nighttime sky. 
However, Abdul Rahman was not there. No, no. You see, he had snuck over the fence and decided that it would be a good idea that instead of paying the fine, thank you, Florida, for this one, instead of paying the fine, he decided to torch his car. One employee saw it and said there was cars burning everywhere. And they saw Abdul Rahman running away from the lot. So police showed up, arrested Abdul Rahman. Surveillance video from the business showed the gentleman lighting bottles of, on fire, then throwing them over. Oh, pardon me. He threw them over the fence. I thought he was on the other side of the fence. He was throwing them over the fence onto his Nissan Altima. He was arrested on charges of arson of a conveyance and possessing or manufacturing a firebomb. I got to tell you, I have a feeling, now maybe it's just me, don't know. Maybe you'll agree with me, maybe you won't. But I have a feeling it would have been cheaper just to pay that fine instead of going to jail. <laughs> Thought of the day happens every night at this time where we post a question on our Facebook and Twitter pages, then read your responses on the air because we love the audience participation around here. Today's Thought of the Day is as follows. In detail, what do you think happened or is happening at Skinwalker Ranch? We got some good responses here today. Most anything paranormal, says Anthony, otherwise known as Tattoo Man. Somewhere on the East Coast. Says anything paranormal, crypto you can think of. Dude, if you haven't checked out Hunt for the Skinwalker by George Knapp, best coast-to-coast -coast host in my opinion, you have to. Well, I think it's a pretty good idea. Let's see here. Michelle. I believe Skinwalker Ranch is a paranormal vortex that just brings in all kinds of nasty and weird things, perhaps a dimensional glitch causing the unusual to be normal. Hmm, could very well be. Could very well be. All right, moving on here. James. Never been and don't know enough to speak on it, but it seems there's a lot of portals to other realms around there. Tim, I believe it's interdimensional portals, maybe caused by magnetic anomalies around the area. Chris, I personally think that nothing has happened, and Robert Bigelow bought a ranch on the urging of people because the urban myths that were attached to it. Joe. At some time in the past, Darth Vader and Padme got together. Nine months later, Luke and Leia were born at the Skywalker Ranch. Uh, wrong one. Wrong one, Joe. Steven. Lots of alien probing up there. wonder if he knows that by personal experience. Carl. Human Carl. Not the alien Carl. Human Carl. Nap, Corbell, Skinwalker Ranch, they were actually on the property. I trust what they say. Heidi, over in the UK, it sounds cliche to say it's a portal area, but in the range of our understanding, I think this is what it is, along with the Hestelen in Norway and the San Luis Valley in Colorado. There's probably more, but nobody has connected the dots to the correlation in high strangeness. Keith. What happens at Skinwalker Ranch stays at Skinwalker Ranch. Kelly, until something other than secondhand stories and pics of lights are brought to us, I remain skeptical. We never know if it's him or his beard doing that. Andrew gets the final word. 
I believe it's something we all want the answer for eventually. I have even heard far-fetched things as a secret underground base on top of all of the extraterrestrial and paranormal stuff that's happening there. It'll just be like that scene in A Few Good Men. You can't handle the truth. Remember, you can find the SOR Newswire brought to you by Paranoia Magazine by going to spacedoutradio.com, clicking on the news banner, and boom, it is right there for you to read. Go check it on out. You'll have a good time. I want to say a big thank you to Ryan Burns for coming on, talking about Skinwalker Ranch tonight. Really appreciated that. Tomorrow night on the show, Michael Thompson is here. He's a retired police officer up in Alaska. Now he spends his time looking for Bigfoot and monsters in the mountains of the northernmost state. Going to be fun indeed. 906 Pacific, 1206 AM Eastern at spacedoutradio.com. We got Ron Bumblefoot Thaw rocking in the background with Little Brother is watching. Bumblefoot is the official music of Spaced Out Radio, rocking us in and out of every single show. Get your horns up for the guitar god himself. Special thanks to everyone listening in at home, in your cars, at work, in our chat rooms, on Twitter, at hashtag Spaced Out Radio, and wherever you may be. Remember, this show is copyright by Spaced Out Radio and SOR Media Ventures Limited. Thanks for telling your friends and doing your part to make us bigger and better every single night. Because together, my friends, we own the night. I will talk to you in 21 hours from now. Mr. Bumblefoot, we need a favor. We need you to take us home. Good night, everyone.